This is set of interest. Well, we'll have to go to Italy, damn it. Um, <laughs> reluctantly, we decided to go to Italy and undertake a food tour to Italy. Um, again, all in the interest of research. Right? It's very high level research. Um, again, we brought in experts to help us. Um, we, have, we ate food everywhere. This is a marine environment. We had to test the marine sort of version of the food. Um, and Cynthia's husband, Jack, was particularly helpful on uh, the domestication of seafood. This, this is a critical paragraph in, uh, in chapter 5. Um, so thank you, Jack, for your contribution um, in eating every possible seafood you can find in this uh, quayside restaurant in Genoa in Northern Italy. It's tough writing a text. You've got to do the research. Um, and then you've got to turn big history comes clear. Right? <laughs> it's the it's world. Really world. Got it. Got it. Um, David mentioned this today, and this is a more serious matter, of course. Uh, we have to talk about global warming, in fact, the global warming. We thought, where will we best see that? Damn it, let's go to the French Alps and go to hiking. We'll just have to do it. So this is David about to take the train from uh, Chamonix to Montembert. This is the famous mountaineer's train, the little red train. So many mountaineering classics begin with riding up in this train. Uh, we went up, uh, David decided to get to the heart of the problem of melting glaciers by going deep inside one. Uh, so here's David about to enter a crevasse. Um, we did see some melting. We also met a huge St. Bernard dog in the United States. Unfortunately, that was a Polaroid photograph of David and the dog, and I don't have it. Um, uh, but then we saw this uh, image this morning. It was actually very, very depressing. Uh, this, is, this is hundreds of feet down. I mean, these rocks here are the size of houses. And this, this fantastic glacier, the first glacier ever studied by glaciologists, uh, the glacier that first started giving us the, the, the clues about the ice ages and so on, is rapidly disappearing. Rapidly disappearing. I did cheer up later. We overcame our, um, our altitude sickness. That we remember we had it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we're definitely suffering. So you see, I was sort of was feeling a little bit better. But that's the great Argentia glacier that once flowed right down to the Chamonix Valley, which you can see in the very far corner over there, the valley. It stops just there now. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's thousands of feet higher than it used to be. Uh, we did cheer up over a beer at the bottom of the Chamonix, I remember. Then we thought, well, we need to go back and speak to a real scientist. So we went back to Italy, to Colony Geolco, where this great man, Walter Alvarez, decided to teach us all to be geologists. For a brief moment, I thought, you know, I could be a geologist. I could do this. Um, Walter gave me his hammer. That's Walter Alvarez's hammer. Right? This is the discoverer of the asteroid impact that could pay to the dinosaurs, the, the mighty KT boundary. But my colleagues uh, were not impressed at all. Basically, basically trapped me behind them so that I couldn't get back to the hammer. This is the KT boundary, much higher out there. It's the crucial piece of rock, the crucial strata that gave us the evidence of high iridium layers levels. Uh, that demonstrated there'd been a huge asteroid impact 65 million years ago. That's the holy grail of geology right there, just beside Fred's head. Mm. And uh, <laughs> how exciting to be there, so I realised I couldn't be a geologist, damn it. Um, this is a historic photo, I just had to throw this in. This is the first meeting of what would become the International New History Association at uh, Walter facility in Colin Gioco, with a bunch of leading historians are recognised there, and some really important Microsoft people here also that were instrumental in financing the possibility of this thing. And this is another historic photo. Every one of these folks, this is the, the foundational moment of uh, Big History Association, every one of these folks contributed in their own way to this textbook. Right? There's a bunch of great historians, scientists, children, artists, all there, and we're all thinking collectively. Greg, you have to mention Louis, who is a... Louis, right there. Is Wait. Yeah, yeah. Louis, future big historian in training, was there. Uh, and now Louis, of course, is a very important photographer here. And yeah. are going to be a great big historian of the future. Finally, right? Yeah, you see, we did a lot of travel. This is, this is big travel. So we had an association, but the book wasn't finished, so we decided to go to China for our next meeting, right? It's, you know, you've got to choose somewhere to meet. Why not Hawaii? Why not Italy? Why not Germany? Why not the Great Wall of China? This is just before I disappeared over the horizon there, motion. You last saw me at the uh, yeah. But I did come back. Um, and in fact, one of the most important meet meetings in China was with Moshe Bain, who made us think a lot about how we could structure this book and, and how we work pedagogically and so on. So it's not just the three of us I'm trying to say here. It's the three of us, all these fantastic places around the world, and all the people we got to work with. Everyone that I've had a photograph of here, including you, Louis, contributed to this book. Even Ross Dunn, right? Just, even Ross and Jeannie had some ideas, which I later discarded. Um, but I couldn't help it. I'm an ancient Central Asianist. I kept being dragged back into the world of nomads and, 
and, and being asked to give keynote addresses. And, you know. So my colleagues were despairing and we had a sort of grasping the big picture. Um, so they convened another meeting, this time in Moscow. They said, you've got to go to Moscow. Um, it was freezing cold, it was the middle of February. Um, my feet turned blue after one two-hour excursion walking around outside. Blue. But we had a sort of intervention meeting there uh, to convince me to start thinking bigger. So can I say, this is the love-in uh, after <laughs> Cynthia and I beat him up. Okay. But that's another story. And advice from another dear colleague here, French Pierre, then where else would you go for advice except on an icebreaker in the middle of the frozen Moscow River, right? and sitting out a world expert in big history, and so Thank you. all of these colleagues contributed to this textbook, right? It's not just the three of us. I was so happy after this that we had to run. Um, a little vodka was involved as well. The, 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 More to the middle. I was there with a the world expert in vodka. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we're celebrating. But Dave decided I needed further re-education, so he said, let's go to Korea. So our next meeting was in Seoul, Korea, for the three of us, and the four of us, in fact, right? David, of course, has, uh, has spent five summers in Korea teaching this fabulous university. Oh. Ihua, Women's Ihua. University. Yep. Ihua. What an incredible university. So we were there for the Asian Association of World Historians Conference. But of course, all these meetings were convened around other gatherings, but it gave us a chance to meet, right, all over the world, to meet face-to-face -face in these extraordinary places and discuss our plans. There's other important colleagues that all contributed to this book, including Sun Yue, you can see there, Rand Johnson, who's the first architect of Kona Zoom, and other colleagues from Korea. Nearly finished. The book was finally published, and Cynthia and I got to go on the road and do a, a marketing tour. Of all places, in Minneapolis. No, something, oh, nothing against Minneapolis, I'm sorry. We met in Hawaii and Moscow and Seoul and Italy, and, and here we are in Minneapolis. Selling the book, um, and then the final meeting took place in January this year. This is David's uh, back garden in uh, Lilyfield in, in Sydney, our daughter Zoe and Pamela. We're toasting the book after it was published. So it was a very tough job writing this book, right? We had to travel all over the world. We had to drink too much champagne and vodka and hang out with good friends and climb great walls and so on. But quite seriously, come back to this photo. It's not easy writing a big history textbook. But you sure see a lot of the world and you get to hang out with two of your best friends in the world who are still best friends after this entire process. And I would, that, that's a little dedication to both of them.